Thank you very much for taking your time and uh, welcome to the presentation of Mars Colony One. We invite you to come and inhabit the red planet in the first Martian greenhouse tower with us. And so the team is uh, four people. Uh, you can guess by the names probably that we're quite an international bunch. Uh, we have a multitude of skills and different uh, uh, things that we were uh, responsible for. But so before we begin to dive deep into Mars, let's just go over quickly the main risks and considerations that went into the design that we were considering while we uh, were making the creation of our Mars Tower. So first of all, the health risks, just a few to mention. The radiation, um, as it is a great factor uh, for the crew uh, missions, we had to take it into account. And in our design, we were thinking about how the structure could adapt so that we could try to diminish the radiation uh, risks. How do we, could we could we choose the materials? You will see later uh, in this uh, on this uh, picture what it represents. But already you can see that there is uh, algae bioreactors, which means water, which means that radiation protection. We also considered food choices, which could inhibit uh, cancer, and uh, so we we could uh, maximize the protection of from radiation. And we provide a shelter for when the solar particle events occur or the solar flare blasts. Further, we go on to the psychological factors. So this is the stress alienation, uh, being in confined environments, which we can all relate to today, given the global pandemic. This is also very important in our design. And we were thinking uh, in terms of the crew selection. So how could that be um, treated to try and uh, prevent these psychological damages and uh, negative effects on the health. But in the, our design, of course, we were taking this into account in the modules, the design of our modules, of course, and you can see an example of a social place where people can relax and feel like at home. Of course, food choices are important when it comes to dealing with stress. So that is a big factor in our design as well. Another th big, chapter that we were considering is, of course, the institute resource utilization. Without using the sources, our presence won't be sustainable. And the two main uh, parts in it for us are the regolith utilization and the atmosphere utilization. So mainly we're talking about material and molecule extraction so that we can use it inside the habitats either for the crew, for the life support of the crew, or for the support of our greenhouse, and also regolith for further structural reinforcement. This is um, an overview of how we just went about deciding where to land. So this is a picture from NASA, results of many observations on Mars, and the outlined box here in white is the optimal space where we could land because uh, of the proximity to under subsurface water ice and also the structure of the regolith, so it's easier to land and extract it, whereas it's not too loose like sand, so we won't just dive deep into it and basically submerge ourselves in the regolith. So this is the most optimal um, space to, according to NASA and we decided to be at approximately 50 degrees north to 230 degrees east about here. Whereas I might say, say that as long as we respect the proximity to water and the regolith structure roughly anywhere else on Mars with similar requirements, we could land in other uh, places. So the design is not just for one particular spot, but we took it as uh, for our calculations for, for example, for radiation protection. And uh, now um, let's go closer to this um, magnific magnificent tower and just talk briefly about the systems architecture. So we have three main systems. First of all, uh, food, urban farming wouldn't be a farm if we didn't talk about food, of course. So this system deals with the growth of the, of the food on, on Mars, the preparation, waste management, because we separate the edible and non-edible parts. Uh, we recycle the non-edible parts. And of course we store the food and we store some waste if it's not recyclable, for example. The life crew, uh, crew life support system, of course, is very important. So there are ongoing projects on earth, like for example, Melissa, and we were uh, taking this is basis for our research. So the subsystems of the uh, 
uh, life support system is water processing, of course, and in it, and basically in all of the parts as well, is very important is the system for decontamination because we're going to use regolith, for example, take regolith and extract water from it. So we need to uh, be sure that we don't contaminate our uh, life support systems. We need to build an atmosphere and we need to pressurize it, pressurize it inside the habitat, of course. Another subsystem is heating. And we've already mentioned the ISRU, so the in-situ resource utilization and uh, management of the in-situ of the ISRU is part of the crew life support because in fact, it will a lot depend on how we treat the atmosphere, how, what, how do we extract the molecules, how do we extract the necessary materials from the regolith, and how do we manage to, again, not contaminate ourselves. The third subsystem is power. That's of course very important and primordial subsystem of any um, habitat. So we rely on batteries. For backup, we have a nuclear reactor. So it's either the MRTG or the kilo power. So the NASA uh, best promise, like the next generation um, nuclear small reactors and kilo power. But this is a backup plan. We will rely on batteries and to recharge our batteries, we will rely on using regolith again. So we produce methanol and we have organic oil, which is part of our food subsystem. And then we have a combustion engine which generates electricity on Mars and we can recharge our batteries. And now well, let's cl come closer and dive in and uh, I'll talk a little bit about all the modules that you see in front of you right now, but let's take it step by step. So the first and the base for our farm is the motherboard. It's the motherboard because while well, it connects, it's the, the solid base for our, uh, for our farm and it uh, provides also the power connection. We have several connecting modules. This is one of them. And uh, basically, as you guess by the name, they connect the, the different parts of the, sh of the farm. So this one is connects the shelter, the, which is gonna be uh, underneath, under the ground and the rest of the farm. We have access outside, which we could use just to go outside, but also to later tunnel with maybe other farms. So for the expansion uh, phase. And we also can, uh, we have the, the regular processing units. You can see them on the sides. This, this is a second type of module, connecting module. So this is the main corridor of the farm. And what you can see here is the main battery, which is on its exterior. So it can be connected to the power, uh, power system. The backup battery. This is the like a uh, hardcore uh, of the the connection of the of the whole project because well, of the whole unit because it's a main construction axis, and it's uh, seven rings as you can see now that you see in the in the folded in the closed um, uh, version, and. These rings, they connect directly to the motherboard and on top of these rings later, the rest of the modules will land. So they are um, in different sizes because of the different modules. And here you can see the open version. So you can see that uh, previously it was folded like inwards, all of them on the second uh, ring. It opens like on the left, let's see. And then uh, the rest of the rings open and later the modules will come on land in these rings and like that, the whole system comes together. Uh, we have a garage because of course we need rovers. We will need to have an um, access outside. We will uh, have uh, robots and rovers um, exploring the outside of Mars. So we need to store them. We need to store construction materials. And because the rovers will uh, come outside into the Martian surface, we need a decontamination facility inside the garage as well. For extra space, we have uh, the storage units and also an extra medical supply because in case of uh, an emergency, we need to have it there because the astronauts may need to also access uh, the garage. And uh, an important part of the, or important uh, property of the garage, it also raises the ground level for the shelter because the, the garage arrives uh, uh, first and it will raise the level uh, by using regu regolith so that the shelter can be well protected underneath, under the structure. The refinery module, this is uh, the heart of the power subsystem. 
So uh, basically you see the methanol reaction cha chamber and acquisition tank on the left part, so this part, and the combustion changing ch engines are on the right. So this is the where we generate power basically. And this is the heart of the project, of course, the farm wouldn't be a farm without the greenhouse. So this is how it looks from the exterior. Of course, the main, um, main points is to grow food, is to connect all the other modules. And of course, a very important point is to contain social spaces because that's part of us um, countering the major psychological factors. So what we were talking about, stress, et cetera. So now welcome inside the greenhouse. Uh, you can see the different compartments, but I'm not gonna go into them now. We will come back to that when we do the food studies, when we discuss the different plants that we're gonna grow. This is just to give you a look inside. And uh, again, outside we were just, we were just here in this, uh, in this part. So now let's go dive uh, deeper. Let's go one a level below and this is, you see the greenhouse middle section. So you've already seen the algae bioreactors. You can see that this could be a space for work, maybe even to relax with a book because it's also better protected from radiation due to the extra uh, hydrogen rich materials around one. And this is just below, we were just there. Now we're diving even deeper. And this is uh, the herbal garden that we have, which is, which is also a social place. And also this herbal garden, we also eat the, these herbs, use them for food. So this, now you've seen the, the entire greenhouse on the main three sections. Like this, um, you see our sleeping modules. We have two of them. So in total, we have nine plus one beds, one sick bed and nine beds for the main crew. And the hygiene quarters are in each module. This is a food preparation module. So it's a part of the greenhouse uh, that you've seen previously for several reasons. It contains the packaging system. It also contains the food processing systems. And it's important because it prevents cross contamination of the greenhouse because that's where we keep the bacteria which we need for processing some of the types of foods that we chose. You will hear about them also in a second. This is the main entrance. As you can see, we chose to have um, these outdoor uh, linked, so wall kind of suits. So we have nine suits attached to the wall. And uh, we chose this for mainly for the reasons of um, not bringing in the dust of the, margin at, of the margin outside, also for not, for reducing the contamination. And so the inside the entrance, it has to have a suit cleaning facility and it's, also offers in more storage areas, but also for EVA preparation areas, of course. This is another type of a connection module. So it connects the garage and the ascending, mo ascending module. You will see soon, uh, again, the whole assembly, the whole structure. But it's also important because here we can include a telescope. And this is the command module. So of course, we need to communicate back with Earth. It's also the control room for the whole farm. And as you see, it's important for several reasons. It contains large windows, which are also protected for radiation with special shields in case of, um, uh, for example, increased solar activity. But it's, the windows are important because not only you can have an overview, so for more control around your site, but also for, it's an important psychological factor here on earth, we are used to having windows. And uh, we believe that it is important to at least have uh, some windows in our farm. This is the shelter. So it's an underground shelter about five to six meters underground. It's a, it will be used as an emergency shelter or as a radiation shelter. It's an inflatable shelter, which is inflated last for security reasons. And it also serves as a food storage unit because normally the astronauts won't need to be there except for the radiation alerts or uh, just uh, high solar activity alerts. But we could use it at as food storage in the meantime. This is the ascending module. So we propose that the um, part of it stays on the farm and part of it is used to access to and from the Martian orbit. So you see it contains, it contains some thermal shields to protect the rest of the farm. 
from the engine outbursts. It also has these legs which direct the vibrations from the lift off uh, to the motherboard, which is attached so here, and it's beneath the surface. And this part contains all the, all the subsystems for full sustainability for crew life support for several days, because in case when they need to be in orbit, several days. So basically, you see that this part, it stays um, with, the mar with the farm on Mars, and the top part ascends, and only the very top part then um, is used as we go further into towards Earth. So we dock around the orbit of Mars, and then we go towards Earth. Uh, but as, as we need, we can um, release some of the subsystems so that only the smallest part achieves back to Earth. So this is how the farm looks all together. I hope you can recognize the main features, at least here, let's see the, the, the shape of the heart, so the, the greenhouse modules. Here's the command module, here's the garage, here's the famous uh, connecting module with the telescope, there's the shelter, and you can see the legs maybe of the uh, ascending module mounted on top. Then on this picture you can also see uh, from from the top, the, the whole urban farm. Maybe it's also best to look at it in this way because you can see all the main features. Hopefully you can recognize the main modules. Well, from this side, you can also see the entrance, for example. So that's it on the farm side. Um, we hopefully will have questions about the different modules uh, later and can come back to them. And uh, I now give over to Benjamin for the food studies. All right, thank you, Julia. Can you put the next slide, please? You... Yes, so we had um, some main consideration regarding the food studies. Of course, to avoid menu fatigue, uh, not only because it was tested like on the ISS, but also during a um, much longer mission like in Antarctica. We wanted to provide unprocessed product from Earth to our uh, Marsonauts and fresh vegetables, beans and fruits uh, for uh, nutrition values, but as well for a human factor. Uh, we did some crop selection uh, based on the surface crop production optimization and our food uh, that we are going to grow are going to be also used to produce oxygen and capture uh, CO2. Next slide. So we, we choose to, to grow mainly soy. Uh, it's a soy-centered food production concept. We don't plan to grow any wheat and we plan to, to bring um, wheat flour already processed to avoid a uh, danger of explosion and also to, to reduce uh, some um, logistics. Soy is very interesting because it can be consumed fresh or processed. It has high uh, nutritional values and it permits to uh, produce a lot of different products that offer a variety of taste and texture like soy milk, tofu, soy sauce, okara, yogurt, cheese, edamame, and soybeans, and even oil. Next slide. And uh, I would say the second core of our uh, food choices um, is a focus on what we call noble bacteria, uh, a set of bacteria, yeast, and fungi uh, that are used on Earth to produce not only cheese, but also soy sauce, tempeh, kombucha, and fermented food like sauerkraut. And we consider that not only uh, all this food pre-processed and reprocessed with bacteria uh, and fungi are part of the international cultural heritage of the Earth. But also, most of them help uh, to attain a better assimilation of nutrients. And of course, in terms of taste, it will permit to enhance uh, the use of 
all the other vegetables and some fruits that were going to grow on Mars through these different types of reprocessing uh, through bacteria. Next slide. We also have in included uh, spirulina and uh, algae bioreactors and mushroom reactor in our model. Uh, spirulina, basically because it's a very high source of protein um, versus the, the space ratio. It, 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 that's another way to, to provide some food diversity, but it will be also helpful for uh, water pur purification in our world system and our architecture concept. It will be used to produce oxygen, and it's uh, um, a source of food, protein, and uh, overall uh, logistics that have been already tested uh, in the Melissa concept. And um, the intake of spirulina uh, protein has already been tested in the ISS. Next slide. So in terms of vegetables, beans, and other plants, we have selected um, some of them like lettuce, rucola, Chinese cabbage, dandelion, peanuts, blueberries, strawberry, bell pepper, dwarf tomato, and herbs like thyme, basil, and mint. Um, some of those vegetables have already been grown on the ISS. Some fruits like the blueberries uh, have some anti-radiation properties. And some like um, bell pepper are some of the most requested fresh vegetables on foot by long duration crews uh, during missions in Antarctica. So basically, if our choices were a, a balance between um, human factor and nutrition, pleasure is part of it. So we tested here on Earth some of the menu that could be produced with our own, own uh, Mars grown food. And apart from uh, the wheat flour for the homemade um, bread on the hamburger on uh, our Martian burger on the right, all of those uh, products could be grown in our uh, concept. So in the, in the central column, uh, there's a compartment to avoid uh, cross-contamination with different vegetables like cabbage. I think the mushrooms are below. Vegetables require, require different temperature. So there's a specific compartment in the central column. But all around, you have uh, mainly soy, blueberries, and peanuts. And uh, those three different uh, vegetables can, and fruits uh, can grow in more or less in the same kind of temperature and uh, uh, hygrometry. Yeah, it was designed for this specific challenge. We discussed together we, between architecture choices, uh, human factor uh, needs, logistic needs, and uh, we worked together and, and Stefan worked on the architecture of the concept, basically. Well, it can have many functions, but 